This video is for someone who's never grown mushrooms before and just wants a super quick overview of the general mushroom growing process. Hopefully this intro video will make other parts of mushroom growing less confusing because if you have a high level view of the whole growing process, it will put all those other pieces into place and we'll have you growing mushrooms in no time. Although there is an endless array of specific cultivation techniques, it basically all boils down to one simple process, and that is expanding mycelium on various mediums until it eventually produces a fruiting body, or what we know as a mushroom. I've broken this process down into seven basic steps that basically any cultivation technique follows to some extent. Step one is growing mushroom culture out on a petri dish. Now when I say culture, I'm specifically referring to the mycelium of a species of mushroom that has been chosen for its advantageous genetics. There are some commercially available strains that have certain characteristics, like maybe they produce a bigger fruiting body, or maybe they just grow abundantly, or maybe they're selected for a various color or size. Either way, when you buy a mushroom strain online, you're typically buying a proven commercial strain or a culture. Of course, there are a lot of different ways that mushroom mycelium or culture can end up on a petri dish. One way is just you take a clone, which means you take a fruiting body of mushroom, you cut out a little piece of tissue, and in a sterile manner, you put it on top of the agar and it will start to grow out and form this mycelial culture. Another way, of course, is to use a spore swab. So you can swab some spores on that and then eventually they will sporulate, form mycelium, and you will have a bunch of different strains on agar. Now keep in mind, if you start with a commercial strain, you're starting with like proven genetics, with a proven culture so you know pretty much that the results are going to be awesome. If you're starting from spores like a spore swab you're going to be getting a bunch of different genetics so you're going to be getting a bunch of different strains and it really is a crapshoot. It might be awesome or it might be not so great. Now step one in the mushroom growing process where you're working with agar and you're working with mushroom cultures you need to be really sterile and that's why this stuff is usually done in a laboratory where you can have super clean conditions. Otherwise any other kind of molds or fungi or anything else that might land on your petri dish is very likely going to outcompete your mushrooms. Now although in mushroom growing a petri dish is most likely the place you're going to start with your mushrooms, another option to get a pure mushroom culture is in liquid culture form and I talked about this a lot on the channel but it's basically the exact same thing but instead of being on a agar medium it's in a nutritious broth and it's basically the same kind of mushroom mycelium or mushroom culture that you can use to grow mushrooms. So step two in the mushroom growing process is taking a little bit of this mycelium or taking some of the culture and transferring it to sterilized grain. This this is known as making grain spawn. Again, the grain needs to be sterile before you add your mushroom culture. Otherwise, whatever happens to be in the grain will definitely outcompete your mushrooms. Once the mycelium is on the grain, it will start to grow throughout the grain and eventually you will end up with fully colonized grain spawn, which is just a beautiful thing. So you might be wondering why grain? What's the point of making grain spawn? Well, first of all, mushroom mycelium just absolutely loves grain, right? There are these little pockets of super nutritious medium that the mushroom mycelium can easily get nutrients from and it can grow, but also the grain is just kind of naturally isolated into all these little units. So eventually when you transfer this grain to a bulk substrate, which is another step, you will have a number of inoculation points. So it's easy to spread out that mycelium and that nutrition throughout another substrate and will make it a lot easier for the mushrooms to colonize a bulk substrate, which is eventually the goal when you're trying to grow mushrooms. Now step three is to exponentially expand that grain to make more and more grain spawn. And this is one of the cool aspects of making mushrooms is this exponential growth that can be achieved by the mycelium because basically you start with a tiny little piece of mushroom mycelium you put that on grain and one grain jar once it's fully colonized can be broken up to make 10 grain jars and those 10 grain jars can be broken up to make 100 grain jars and those 100 grain jars can be broken up to make a thousand grain jars and eventually this process stops you can't go on and on forever obviously or else the whole world would just be made up of mushrooms but it's still so amazing to think that the mushrooms can keep on running and running and running and take up all of this nutrition and continue to expand now typically this isn't done by just using a bunch of jars what oftentimes growers will do well they'll start with a little piece of mushroom mycelium on agar they'll put it on one grain jar and then they'll use Use one grain jar to make a bunch of grain spawn bags and then that's only two transfers and then the grain spawn bags will be what is used to transfer it to a bulk substrate and eventually grow mushrooms. But this exponential growth of mycelium and this idea of keeping the mycelium running is kind of this one underlying factor that encompasses all of mushroom cultivation. I should also mention that grain spawn can be added to sawdust as well to make
make what is known as sawdust spawn. So you don't need to use grain spawn in the further generations and sawdust spawn can be something that is really useful for spawning outdoor garden beds, for example. So you're not just dumping a bunch of grain outdoors and you're gonna end up with problems with mice and stuff like that. So sawdust spawn is something that is common and useful, although most commonly in mushroom cultivation, it starts and ends with grain spawn. Also, grain spawn can be added to pasteurized or sterilized wooden dowels to make something called plug spawn. And plug spawn is useful for inoculating whole logs to grow something like shiitake or reishi on logs outdoors. In general though, spawn is just used as a carrier to efficiently get mushroom mycelium into a bulk substrate where you can eventually grow and fruit mushrooms. By the way, if you like mushrooms and mushroom content, feel free to take a second and hit that subscribe button. Also, while you're down there, if you could hit that like button as well, it really helps the channel so much. So step four is spawning the grain to a bulk substrate. Once you have a satisfactory amount of spawn, you can break it up and inoculate a bulk substrate where eventually your mushrooms will grow. Now, typical substrates will depend on the species of mushrooms, but can vary from straw to hardwood sawdust, to logs, to compost, and they will need to be either pasteurized or sterilized depending on the amount of nutrition that's in the substrate. If you want to learn more about mushroom substrates, I did do an entire video on that, so you can go ahead and check that out here. When you're adding your spawn to your bulk substrate, this is also where you're deciding what type of fruiting container or cropping container you're gonna use. And again, this can vary widely depending on what species of mushrooms you're growing and the kind of technique that you wanna use. So this could involve something like uh, making a garden bed and adding your grain spawn to straw in a bed and making a bed culture, which is kind of similar to what like button mushroom farmers or agaricus mushroom farmers do where they have these large wooden trays or large wooden beds that they spawn into compost to grow the mushrooms or you can add your spawn to straw in maybe polytubing and make like a hanging log culture some people make wall cultures um, you could also make you know use a laundry basket or a five gallon bucket um, but one of the most popular ones obviously is these fruiting blocks which are just mushroom grow bags and this is just called a, a fruiting block where the mushroom is spawned to a bulk substrate inside of these grow bags and mushrooms will grow out of these bags. So step five is colonization. Once the spawn has been added to the bulk substrate, the mycelium will hit another stage of growth where it's just voraciously kind of growing throughout the substrate, absorbing nutrients and trying to get as much as it can from whatever substrate you happen to put it in. And mycelium will just continue to grow and grow and grow until it hits the edge of the usable substrate. So in a mushroom grow bag as you can see the mycelium is kind of you know growing throughout this substrate and it will just continue to grow until it's fully colonized or fully consolidated um, and the same will happen in the garden bed it will continue to grow maybe until it hits the edge of the garden bed so this is a stage again where the mycelium is kind of powering up and absorbing all the nutrients from the substrate and getting ready to grow mushrooms and this is called colonization but it's just the mycelium running again and if you take a substrate after it's been fully colonized and you break it up, it will just continue to run into whatever substrate you put it in. So it doesn't fruit until either the environmental conditions change or until you kind of force those environmental conditions to change and you kind of force it into a fruiting condition. Once the substrate is fully colonized and the mycelium has forced its way into every area that it can, it's time to induce pinning, which is step number six. Now this can happen naturally or it can be kind of forced to happen by changing the environmental conditions. Usually when mushrooms are grown outside with the seasons, obviously this happens naturally as temperatures cool down and, or maybe you get a rainy season like the case of the reishi and the mushrooms will kind of naturally feel that it's time to fruit. When mushrooms are grown indoors, this process is done artificially by putting the mushrooms in a fruiting chamber or by putting the mushrooms in a grow room, which are typically cooler and super high humidity, which is gonna force those mushrooms to want to produce fruits. Now, pinning is not really a technical word, but basically what it means is that the mycelium will start to form these tiny little knots, which will eventually form a fruiting body and finally we have mushrooms which means we can move on to step seven allowing those mushrooms to grow and to harvest subsequent flushes once the mushrooms are growing the environmental conditions are still important but they're not nearly as important as they were when we were just trying to induce pinning although mushrooms in general still like to have high humidity and generally cooler temperatures most species also want a reasonable amount of light and a fair amount of fresh air now for the most part most gourmet mushrooms grow really fast some mushrooms like oyster mushrooms might even double in size overnight and this is the funnest part of the mushroom growing process is just to see those mushrooms and all your hard work start to grow into this beautiful bounty of mushrooms of course 
course, once you harvest your mushrooms, the fun is not necessarily over because many species of mushrooms will be good for subsequent flushes, which is just a fancy word for saying you can have multiple crops or multiple harvests of your mushrooms. A lot of the times for oyster mushrooms, for example, you can just remove them, put the mushrooms right back into fruiting conditions and they will grow again, sometimes two, three, even up to four times. Now, some commercial mushroom growers will only do one harvest just because there's diminishing returns, but home mushroom growers can quite often and quite easily get multiple flushes out of their block, out of their garden bed, out of their straw log, no matter where the mushrooms grow, typically you can harvest them more than once. And finally, once the mushrooms have been harvested and there's nothing more coming out of the block, there's nothing more coming out of the substrate, you basically just take the substrate, put it into the compost pile, and the whole process can start over again. Again, there's lots of different techniques and lots of different ways that you can grow mushrooms, but they basically all follow these same basic seven steps, which is just expanding the mycelium as much as you can until it eventually produces mushrooms that you can harvest and then you go back to step one and do it all over again. So I hope that was helpful. I hope it gave you a really high level view of the mushroom growing process. It might give you an idea of where to dive in deeper, where you wanna learn and what part of the process you wanna better understand when you're growing your own mushrooms. So thanks so much for watching this video. I'm Tony from freshcap.com and we will see you in the next one.